So before we start, can we have you say and spell your name? Sure. It's Lisa McDonald, L-I-S-A-M-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. Awesome. So today is July 3rd, 2018, and we are at Sanctuary Brewing in Hendersonville, North Carolina, um, uh, with an interview for Wellcrafted NC. So Lisa, can we start by just having you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how, how you came here? Sure. Um, so I am a Chicago native and came to North Carolina via about 15 other places. Before I was doing this, I was a professional consultant, so it kind of kept me moving quite a bit. So I've lived in a few countries and all over this country and finally settled down here in 2012, just fell in love with Hendersonville um, and have been here ever since. Yeah. So what's your role here at Sanctuary? <laughs> My role here at Sanctuary is kind of everything, <laughs> although I'm transitioning away from that a little bit. So from the beginning, it was tending bar to booking all of the events, to taking care of staff, um, kind of documenting all of our procedures, et cetera. But I feel like I used a lot of that consulting background to really stabilize and make sure that all of our processes and procedures are well documented. And then I hired the best staff any brewery has ever had. I know that's a big statement, but they're awesome. Um, so I have backed away a little bit from those things. So these days I do all of our bookings, our scheduling, I oversee our payroll, I do all of our accounting legalities. Um, and then the creative side. So any new kind of ways to either help the community or get our name out there or say fun collaborations, those things usually come through me. Um, so let's talk a little bit about starting Sanctuary. Yeah. Um, when, when, when did Sanctuary open? We opened in August of 2015. So we are right around the corner, like literally six weeks away from our third anniversary, which is, yeah, pretty exciting. Awesome. <laughs> so what was it that really led you? I mean, that's a pretty decent career shift. What led you to go from consulting to opening a brewery? Yes, <laughs> it was a very big career shift. Um, so when my partner and I moved here originally, the idea was to kind of have a respite from all of this business travel that I was doing and grow food and rescue some animals and things like that. And in the meantime, while that was happening, his kind of trajectory as a brewer was really taking off. And we decided we could take those two passions of you know, caring for animals and trying to make the world a better place and making beer and just put those ideas together. And that's where the name Sanctuary came from. Um, and the goal was to someday have an animal sanctuary and within just over two years we did. So now we actually have a 501c3 animal rescue and our brewery. Well, let's talk a little bit about, um, well, you, you kind of mentioned this already, but why Hendersonville? Yeah, so we moved to Asheville totally blind, like I said, um, just about five years ago, knew nothing about it, had some friends that said we would like it, and since I could kind of work anywhere and the beer scene was exploding, it seemed like a good fit. So we took two dogs and a cat and threw them in a truck. We didn't throw them. <laughs> Carefully placed I, I'm them. very nice to my animals, yeah. <laughs> we lived in a hotel for a few weeks and we were just trying to figure out where we wanted to settle down. And we drove through Hendersonville, I think going to DuPont and literally fell in love. Um, and one of the first places we stopped in this town was Southern Appalachian. And we met Kelly at that moment and she's so wonderful in every way. She was kind of like the deal closer for us. We're like, this place is great. The people are wonderful. Um, and that was it. We were just in love with this town. And I feel like there's almost some divine intervention there because it turns out we're exactly where I feel like we were always supposed to be. Yeah. So we moved here about six months after that and just never looked back. And you, y'all were the second brewery here, right? We were. We were the first brewery downtown and the second brewery in Hendersonville. Yes. Yeah. So how would you define the main mission of Sanctuary Brewing? Um, so we are trying to promote excellent craft beer and advocacy for all living beings, so human and non-human animals, and that keeping it nice and sweet. That kind of branches into a lot of different things, but that's our overall mission. Yeah, and can we talk a little bit more about the animal sanctuary? Sure. How, and how it, how it ties in with yeah. that overall mission. Yeah, so when we first opened, we thought it would be a really cool way to take a brick and mortar and promote some of the things we believe in. So animal adoption, fostering animal care, um, cruelty-free diets, etc. And so we started doing things like that. We were holding adoption events here. We were holding yoga with cats 
here every weekend, which was absolutely adorable and so much fun. And all of these kind of crazy ideas, we did a Thanksgiving and brought a turkey in. His, his name is Xander, he's adorable. Um, so yeah, we were doing all of these kind of interesting things and then at the same time, we were rescuing, adopting, and fostering out of our home, which is about two miles from here thankfully because we can kind of manage both that way but we have three acres and um, so we got to I think probably around 12 animals <laughs> realized that trying to pay for that with a startup brewery was a little tough so we got our nonprofit status in October and became a full 501c3 nonprofit and that's when things really kind of lit up for us and since then, we've been able to do a lot more projects we couldn't have done on our own on brewery owners' startup salary. Um, so we fenced in a lot of the property. We built a few different pastures. We built a few different stalls, and that now we're at 21 animals. So. Oh wow! Yeah. What 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 kinds of animals do you have? We now? have um, four dogs, four cats, eight chickens, two turkeys, two goats, and a pig, and they're all amazing. <laughs> It's a happy little family. It is a happy little family, and they all get along, which is remarkable, like dogs and turkeys and chickens and pigs all kind of playing together, so wow. it's a pretty happy place. Yeah, it's very yeah. unique. Yes, it is. Yeah. So um, backing up a little bit pre-Animal Sanctuary, I guess when you were first starting the brewery, can you talk about some of the challenges that you guys faced in just starting from scratch with a brewery? Yes. So money would be our biggest challenge in starting a brewery, and I think that's probably true of everyone. We really wanted to get this going on a shoestring budget, um, and, and we did, but it was, it was definitely very tough. And the other thing is, I had quite a bit of business acumen from my job as a consultant, but had no idea how to start a business or what that entailed. And I always say it's a lot like being blindfolded and shoved out of an airplane at the beginning, you literally just don't know what you're doing and you kind of have to wing it. Um, so we would go to Andy and Kelly from Southern App every chance we could and they were kind of our role models and mentors through the whole process of what we needed to do and making sure that we were covering all of our bases. And then from there it was just kind of going for it. All of this construction was done primarily by us. We had to put all of the plumbing in. Um, these rooms that uh, this space is made up of were actually divided into two spaces. So. We did, a, we did a lot. It was a yeah. lot of manual labor and terror. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's great. I love this space so much. So. What was the space like when you guys first, I guess, it was a found it? Yeah, it was a blank slate, let's say that. So it was really, there were, the owner of the building had some cars parked in here and then it was just white walls and nothing else. So it was concrete floor, white walls, and that was it. Um, so everything you see was done like from the painting to the upgrade of all the walls, again putting in all the plumbing, all the electrical, these gorgeous banners um, were custom made for us. So really just kind of adding our personalities and some charm on top of all of the work that we did to this very, very empty space. Yeah. Um, so y you mentioned the folks at Southern Appalachian being a good resource for starting up. Are there other people or resources that were really kind of playing important roles in getting going here? Um, we crowdfunded quite a bit, and so friends and family and their support were absolutely amazing. We had volunteer days at the beginning, like paint parties where people would come in that had never met us before just to kind of help out. The community of Hendersonville has been so wonderful literally from day one, from the second they found out we were going to open. So the, the answer to that question is yes, every person we have ever met kind of was helpful and lovely and supportive, either financially or with their time or even just motivationally kind of being, having our backs through the whole thing. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about, I guess, the size of the brewery when you first opened? And yeah. then we'll get to now. Yeah, so the space, we originally opened just half of the space that you see here, which was about 2,000 square feet, and now we're at 4,000 square feet. We were renting the whole property. We just didn't have the money to upgrade this side of it. So we kind of upgraded everything got that standardized and then started working on the other half. And then our brew system is the same size it's always been, which is just over a three barrel system, which means a lot of brew time. Um, but it also gives us some flexibility with our recipes because we brew five times a week, which means we're doing really cool small batch one-offs as well as our more kind of tried and true staple beers. Yeah. So um, as of right now, 
if, uh, if you can count them. How, how many employees do you guys have now? I think we have around 10. That's yeah, awesome. between our brew staff and our bar staff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that, <laughs> within those 10, there's a ton of overlap. So one of our brewers also tends bar. Another one of our bartenders also helps me do a lot of admin work. Another bartender named Trey does all of our social media. So it's kind of like this cool kind of overlap Venn diagram of skills. Yeah. And so that's probably pretty helpful, you know, regardless of what your task is to have kind of your hand in different pots, I would think. Yeah, and it's it's kind of a family effort, you know what I mean? We are all very close and it is kind of like everyone jumping in according to their skill set. And I think for them it also keeps it interesting because there's some diversity in what they're doing day in and day out. And they're really helping. Like. It's such a team effort to keep this place operational, um, and so everybody has kind of a niche place. Yeah. So you mentioned that you guys do a lot of small batch one-offs, but that you do have your tried and true yes. specialties. Do you have a beer or beers that you consider kind of your signature? I would say our Hot Pig IPA, which is a West Coast IPA, is our flagship beer. It's what we produce the most of, it's what we go through the most of. People are very, very devoted to that beer, which is awesome. It was named after our pig, Oliver, so it's Hot Pig. Um, and then we have a few other, we've got a Kolsch, a Bobby Beer Jr. Kolsch, named after the musician Bobby Bear Jr., who's playing here for our anniversary next month, which is just funny and awesome. Um, so those are two main ones, and then we do a Carolina Panther Porter, that's also a pretty big deal to our yeah. clientele. And then other than that, there are a few others that come back on a regular basis, but we'll do different things with them. So we'll have a pale ale and maybe sour it or add brett to it or add peppers to it. And so there might be a long line of one-off beers based on a pretty consistent beer profile. Yeah. So. Um, one of the recurring events that you guys currently have is the Sunday Community Meal. Can you talk a little bit about the history of that and then also some of the changes that are happening here now? Yes. So as part of our outreach to the community, and I'm going to sidetrack for a second and Please then we'll do. go back to it. But we, again, that, like kind of the more interesting or unique the idea, that's it's always been something we embrace here. So we started doing something right after we opened called the Kindness Well, where we put out essentials bags with things like deodorant, toothpaste, combs, brushes, shampoo, sunblock, bug spray, water bottles, all those things, and we leave them out for the public. Um, and we'll typically just kind of flash that on social media so people know that they're here. And that way nobody who's kind of going through a rough time in their life needs to come in and be kind of vulnerable. Um, they can take what they need, no questions asked. And it also allows for people to donate whenever they like, so you can leave things or take things. In the winter, it's mostly coats, etc. So along that sort of idea of giving back to the community, we made a free meal the first Easter we were open for everyone on a Sunday, and it was so well received that we have done a free meal to the public every Sunday ever since. 95% of them made by yours truly. Um, and that does a, a couple of things. One, it again is outreach to the community. If you can pay for it, it's donation based. If you can't, that's fine too, no questions asked. And the other thing is as a vegan business, it really helps us get vegan food out to the public. People that maybe otherwise wouldn't try something because they think it doesn't taste good or it's not interesting. And so it kind of changes perceptions on what vegan food can actually be. Um, so we've loved that program, but we are about to open a restaurant partnered with Jezzy Vegetarian vegan that who's a vegan chef on PBS and that's opening tomorrow which will be July 4th so when this airs it won't be tomorrow <laughs> anymore we're gonna have a very successful restaurant um, so what we're going to do when the kitchen opens instead of that community meal is offer anyone that needs a meal a meal whenever the kitchen is open so if you come in and you need a warm meal and you can't afford it no questions asked we have a pool or a fund to uh, cover that yeah and can you talk about, about um, are there other kind of community outreach efforts that you guys are, are working on that you would like to talk about? Yes, there are quite a few. So monthly we do a community event called the Give Forward series. It's actually our next one is this coming Monday where we offer just different community um, necessities. So we do haircuts. We partner with Lux Salon in town to give haircuts to members of the community. We offer a free hot meal. We serve um, coffee. 
we the, at this next one we're going to help with basic job skills so job app filling in job applications um, teaching people how to just perform well on an interview writing a cover letter things like that and then we also do a clothing drive um, and set up really this whole room is kind of a closet or a store and we provide people bags so they can come in and just kind of shop again no questions asked and so we do that about once a month and we're also just about to kick off a bike drive for members of the community because having a bike is literally the difference between having independence and not having a job and not so we're really excited about that bike drive as well yeah and it seems like a lot of the partnerships that you're doing they benefit the community but they also bring in other members of the community to to provide them kind of a space to provide service too. yes yes so the the reason we partnered with Lux Salon is because Christine, the owner, does my hair, and I casually mentioned it, and she was like, "Yeah, let's do it. Lux will do it." It's just really just putting these ideas out, and people are so receptive to these very simple things. Um, they just didn't maybe kind of have an outlet to to do them. So um, Yam Yoga and Massage is coming to this the next event they're going to provide massages I have friends who are customers at the bar who took the day off just to come in and help people are doing nails at this event so literally I, I, I think that everyone was just kind of thirsty for an idea and that's all we do is kind of offer the baseline which isn't the hard stuff it's the skill that is actually really benefiting people yeah we just kind of facilitate and then let them do the really important stuff so it's, it's been awesome yeah so, you know, we've kind of talked about the new kitchen that's coming in, but are there other changes that are kind of on the horizon or other things that you're hoping to see in terms of growth in the future? Yeah, well, the first thing is our brew system is right up front in our brewery and we open it too in the summer. So it kind of limits how much work the brewers can get done during the day. So they're at very early AM starts right now. So we're actually moving that to a space in the back. So we have another 900 square feet or so that we use as storage right now. So we're transitioning our, our space, our entire brew system to that area in the back. And then within the next year, we're hoping to upgrade as well. So moving the smaller system into the back means we get the plumbing and the electrical and the drainage all set up. And then when we're ready to kind of put in a new system, it should be, fair, knock on wood, yeah. fairly simple, simpler than it would be to be doing all of those things at the same time. Yeah. Um, so currently, do you guys do all of your distribution in the tap room? Are you are you canning or distributing outside of the actual tap room? We're canning and distributing very little. So we're in a few locations. We're in Plant Restaurant in Asheville pretty regularly. We're in the Block Off Biltmore in Asheville pretty regularly. Um, we're hoping when we move that system to the back, we can brew twice a day and start doing a little bit more um, wholesale distribution which will be my job when that happens I know I'm pretty excited about it so yeah we'll start selling more when we can brew more and that again should help us lead into getting a bigger system yeah so you know even though you guys have only been open for almost three just shy of three years the beer and brewing scene around here and just in the greater Asheville area has changed tremendously just in those three years. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the brew scene in Hendersonville and I think by proxy um, because of Asheville has really exploded. Um, when we moved here, the South Slope wasn't even a thing and I, there are probably 15 walkable breweries down there at this point. And then we've seen quite a bit of growth um, so it was originally two, and I think we should, Hendersonville will have a six by the end of this year. Yeah, so, and that's within two and a half years, like you said, so it's it's booming. Yeah, so when you guys were originally looking at the space, like you said, y'all were the first downtown yes. brewery. Were there issues that you ran into with being kind of downtown and not in, is it 7th Avenue? Yeah. Is where Southern Appalachian is? Yes, the, downtown Hendersonville wasn't even zoned for brewing, so they literally changed the books um, before we opened. And that was another occasion where it was an open meeting with city council and people we had never even met came in to kind of like go to bat for us. It was just awesome. And so that decision was fairly unanimous. I think there was one person that was against it. But yeah, so it's been just so kind. I, I just can't say enough good things about this town. Yeah. Um, so 
One of the things that um, you know I've been talking to folks about on this trip, we've been primarily talking with women brewers and owners, um, and I think most people, when they traditionally think of craft breweries, they think of a of a man. Yep. Can you? And but Hendersonville seems really fascinating because at least of the open breweries currently, all three at least have a woman as a co-owner. It seems. Yes. And so. You know, it may be a different situation here, but can you talk a little bit about being a woman in a male, traditionally male, stereotypically male, however you want to phrase it, industry? (laughs) Um, Yes, but that's actually been the case my entire life. So I went from IT to professional consulting and it was completely a man's world. I was also going to countries that uh, maybe are a bit more misogynistic and sometimes being like flat out ignored in meetings and you just kind of keep blazing that trail. And I feel like by the time I got into the beer movement, there are so many women before me that changed the game that I couldn't possibly take any credit for it. There are organizations like the Pink Boots Society and people like Leah Wong, who you said you have met with, Mm -hmm. who have been in this industry for such a long time and are so brilliant and professional and skilled that I just kind of came in at the right time in history. Yeah. And Pink Boots is also something that's come up a number of times in talking to women. Can you talk about that in this area? Yes. So um, it has that Pink Boots is a nonprofit 501c3 organization that promotes women in the industry. So not specifically just brewing, but women in the industry across the board. Um, And they have a a fairly um, solid presence in Asheville. I think they started out with a bigger presence in the eastern part of the state, but it's really kind of blossomed here. Um, yeah, thanks to some local leadership, Katie Smith from Highland is a great example of that. So yes, we are our own chapter now. We fall under Asheville, but I'm I'm lucky to say we fall under Asheville there. Right, right. Um, yeah, it, it seems that, that that's kind of also given uh, a lot of the women in the industry an opportunity just to kind of meet each other and work together on collaborative brews and things like that. It seems like it's given a lot of people kind of that opportunity yeah, it's, just to chat. Yeah, it's the it's it has done all of those things. It's so unbelievably um, supportive within the kind of women in the industry and what struggles they might be dealing with. But I feel like it's not even so much based on struggles. It's like um, the things that we're most proud of, our accomplishments, and collaborating, working together on whatever it might be. So, be that educational incentives or beer incentives via collaborations or the Beer to Femme, which is an all-female. Um, driven beer festival that moves around every year that we've participated in for the last two years so yeah they they're doing awesome things they're making my life a whole lot easier (laughs) by being great and really like creating a network of women in this industry yeah um so if we had a woman wander through right now Mm -hmm. came up to you and said i want to do this (laughs) i want to start my own brewery (laughs) what advice would you give her um Hire a good brewer or become a good brewer. And that doesn't mean go from home brewer. It means go to school and get the best education you can. And and I say that because there is such a difference in commercial brewing and home brewing. So you might have locked in your recipes, etc. But the level of discipline around cleaning, staffing, talking to customers is just completely different. There's so much science that is taught in the educational Um, side of it and then also what we did was take every business class we possibly could we we leveraged Mountain Biz Works we did their training we did as many of the score training classes as we could write a business plan that is flawless even if it takes you six months or a year to do it get your plan in order first because that's just going to help you negotiate all of your conversations either with financers um, backers, banks, lawyers, etc. Everybody wants to know that you're serious about it and just having a, a document that says this is exactly what we want to do is a difference maker for us. I would say we, we would both say that, my partner and I. Yeah, and this part of the state seems to kind of be uh, rich with brewing education programs. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you're not. There's a Blue Ridge program and an Inca Cadler program. Those are the two biggest ones, and that's AB Tech. So, yeah, go to one of those two schools and just figure it out. And there are also different kind of tracks you can take. So you can go from a very basic brewing education to, you know, your Cicerone training, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. We're lucky to live in a part of the country where all those, those education um, programs are an option because they're not in most other places. So take advantage of them. <laughs> Right. So kind of putting your forward thinking hat on, 
where do you see the industry going in five, six years? Um, that is a very good question. I, I think that what we've historically seen in brewing across the country and specifically in North Carolina is a success rate of between 94 and 96 percent. So in any service, service or product industry, that's unbelievable and it's been at that trend for a while so i have a feeling that's going to taper off a little bit and probably go down somewhat and then normalize um so i don't think we're saturated by any means but i think at this point the air is a little bit thinner you kind of have to make a very good product um and really let your personality shine through so i i, I would say in this industry versus others, people really want to know you. They want to talk to the brewers. They want to know a little bit about your character and what your life is like outside of the brew world, um, what's important to you, et cetera. So I, I think that as like an animal loving, cruelty free business, that might not resonate with 100% of our customers, but I think people acknowledge and respect the fact that we're being very true to ourselves and we're kind of living our lives um, through our business, and I, I think that's really important. Yeah. So, um, what would you say is your favorite part of working in the North Carolina craft brewing industry? Oh my gosh, there's so much good beer. There's so many things I love about it. it you meet some of the absolute best people, um, not only in the brewing industry, but in the brewery support industries, the directors and the lawyers and the accountants and the insurance people. Everyone is is pretty positive. Um, I also love the fact that we have live music here about seven times a week because we're in a town that has so much talent, it's ridiculous. So I have a place where I can actually support local artists and that's really beautiful. And then the other thing I would say is specifically for us is we're, we are, we do feel like we're doing some good in the world. We've raised $20,000 for nonprofit organizations in the first two and a half years. And as a small business, that's remarkable. Um, we did start our own nonprofit. I'm about to start an, a second nonprofit with a friend of mine. Um, details are still a little bit under wraps, but it's given me all this freedom to do these things that are really important to me in an industry that I absolutely love, surrounded by people that I respect. Yeah. So you mentioned to all the good beer. This is always one of the most, most challenging questions for folks. What's your favorite beer from a North Carolina brewery other than your own? So I'm going to be very diplomatic and not choose anyone in Hendersonville or Asheville because <laughs> that, this would go on for days. I would say as IPAs go, my current favorite is the oatmeal IPA from Mother Earth, which if you haven't had is outstanding. Um, and they just came out with a Berliner Weiss not too long ago. Um, that's also awesome. Their, their beers are just yeah. great, but that oatmeal IPA is like next level. Yeah, and they're, they're a brewery who I think in some ways their mission kind of aligns <laughs> with you guys. And there are a number, it, that's one of the things I think is really interesting in North Carolina is there are a number of breweries that do kind of have a, um, well, many have a focus on community, but many also have a focus on um, human animal welfare. Yeah. That, that type of. Yep. Do doing the least amount of harm yeah. with it, yes, with, with what you have to Sustainability offer. was the word I was going to use, Yeah, it doesn't really seem like the right word. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I would say that sustainability is one facet of a larger picture of, like, trying to do good at the same time. So, yeah. Yeah, they're very mission-driven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what's your favorite beer here? Okay, can that's also very tough. I can pick a few. So, one, so... <laughs> <laughs> we do a sour version. I was talking a little bit earlier about how we'll take like one beer and do different varieties of it. We have a pale ale called um, Little Sebastian. And yes. Like Parks and Rec. We do uh, so many Parks and Rec beers. It's ridiculous. We both love that show. But we do a sour version of that beer that is amazing. And that, so I like the Bretts and the Sours quite a bit. That's my niche these days. Yeah. Um, we did a Brett IPA called Rock of Love that I think is one of the best things we've ever put out. And these days we're doing hazy IPAs like nobody's business. We did a, a pineapple milkshake hazy IPA about a month ago. That was awesome. So every time I think I have a favorite, this team will come up with something else and then it like changes the whole game for me. But the, those are highlights of mine, I would say. Yeah. So when you're not here and when you're not at the farm, I'm always you're probably here asleep. or at the farm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what would you say that you do in your free time? Um, if you ever have any? Yeah. 
uh, I'm usually at the farm. I'm kind of, a, I'm usually here at the farm. Um, I just came back from a conference in LA, so I still really like to travel when I can. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of have to have a network, like a team behind me to do that because what is like basic animal care for me when I'm not around is sometimes a squad of four people to do the same thing. Um, but for the brewery, I can kind of work remotely. So I'm, I'm a big hiker, a big camper. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, those are probably the two biggest things, hiking and camping. I try yeah. to be outside as much as possible, which is great when you have 21 animals. Yeah. So they like it too. Yeah. So with the with the farm, you know, you mentioned you were a Chicago girl. Did yes. you have farm experience before you guys got going? No. I had zero farm experience. I had visited quite a few sanctuaries. You kind of find your family like in the beer world and in the animal kind of rescue or refuge world and so I was able to benchmark and kind of leverage the expertise of people that I really look up to a lot of whom are in North Carolina so lucky enough to go visit sanctuaries and just pick the brains of people who have been doing this for a really long time so I kind of knew dog and cat care and then we chickens came along and then the pig came along and then you know it just kept growing from there but I also volunteered at the Carl Sandburg farm for about four years and we've adopted two goats from them so I kind of knew what I was doing there but I'm friends with the rangers so that's always helpful um, so yeah yeah they're, they're all so unique and different and their needs are so different that it's I wouldn't call it kind of animal care knowledge it's very very specific to the creature and and their needs and their wants and, and the enrichment we can offer them so we try to focus on the individual yeah so that kind of ends my list of prepared questions but is there anything else that you would want to talk about kind of to get the full picture of sanctuary i mean i think that's I think that's pretty good. I, the fact that we were able to cover like the, the kindness initiatives we do, and thank you for asking if we do anything else because it brought into that Give Forward series that we haven't really had much of a chance to talk about. And then our love of all animals <laughs> on top of this place being my whole life <laughs> and the kitchen. So yeah. I think it was good. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Thank you guys. <laughs>